Chapter 4 By the way, I want to address something real quick. Um, I am saying a lot of opinions in this uh, Let's Play and know that I'm just saying my opinion. I am not uh, saying anything is fact um, or I'm not claiming that what I'm saying is factual or facts. I'm just stating an opinion. I might be I might sound passionate about it. That does not mean I'm right. Just want to address that so no one feels like I'm misleading them or, or anything along those lines. Please think for yourselves. Form your own opinion. And if you want, you can discuss it. Maybe in the comments. <laughs> Alright, moving on. It's such a nice day. When did it get so warm? I thought it was still winter. There's a breeze from over the water, making the leaves rustle gently. Everything smells nice. Why haven't I been taking advantage of this beautiful day? It is quite a beautiful day. I should be out here, walking along the waterfront. There's a calm and peace and contentedness. Now I see how special this is. I think... I think it wasn't always this way, but it's hard to tell. I knew I was having problems at one point, but that was so long ago. When was that? I can't remember. This moment in time seems to stretch to infinity. It has always existed. It will always exist. Unchanging. Perfect. Is this an app? Are we in an app? The surface of that lake is such a brilliant blue. A blue I could lose myself in. Forever blue. I'm sorry, my neighbors are making noises. I hope that doesn't pick up. Well, what do you think? It was... it was nice. It was like I could close my eyes and feel myself in another place. What? Did she test herself on... But I didn't completely lose awareness of the real world. It was more like a mental state that I was experiencing. Remarkable technology, isn't it? I've had others who tried it tell me it's akin to a state of higher consciousness. Aware, but totally serene, totally peaceful. Soren retrieves a bottle of whiskey from a liquor cabinet and serves himself. Here's a thought experiment for hey, you. Hey, could you give some to me? I mean, that would only be nice. Say there was a certain medical procedure that could remove your suffering. No side effects, no cost, just an operation that would make you permanently happy. Oh... I don't... I don't really like the sound of that. Would you get it? No. You have these philosopher types arguing you shouldn't do that because sadness and suffering yeah, exactly. are part of what it means to be human. <laughs> That's what I feel like. I feel like it forms you. If you're just perpetually happy, then you can't deal with the problems of the world because there's gonna be problems. If everyone had it done, no one would be able to solve problems uh, I, I, I'd say at least or that the happiness you'd experience isn't real so it doesn't count somehow what a load of bullshit if there was something effective at taking my pain away and otherwise harmless I would take it immediately Mm, I don't think you're un fully understanding what you're saying. I refuse to believe that being alive means having to suffer. No, it doesn't have to s mean that, but you have to feel sadness once in a while. I mean, what if someone you knew died and you were unable to feel sad because you had that procedure? You would just be happy about it? That's weird. His voice is getting so ragged. How many drinks did he have before I came here? Why did I come here? Oh, forgive me, I forgot to ask. Would you like some scotch as well? What's the time? It's late. Yeah, thanks. Now you ask. Sure. Sure. 
Soren gets another glass and gives me a small the pour. The Glen Beautiful, light, luminous taste. Not peaty at all. Lovely stuff. Ah, if only psychotherapy worked as well as a single glass of well-made whiskey, huh? It's a nice apartment. If alcohol wasn't poison, I wouldn't have to invent anything now, would I? <laughs> I do think we did some good work at Skanda, but I always knew there were going to be limits to the Eliza approach. I was a counseling psychologist for a long time, you know. I understand the shortcomings better than anyone. So much of it can feel like a waste of time, talking through everything, dredging up the past over and over again, trying and failing to change our habits and routines. It's all going to look completely ineffectual compared to what comes next. With direct stimulation and induced dreaming, we can take control of our own brains in a way that's never been possible before. Yeah, they, they're both moving in directions that are dodging. There's no I think. reason we couldn't just eliminate this epidemic of despair for everyone, everyone in the world. The question is whether or not this is avoidable, this sort of situation. Because if someone, if one person can come up with this, with this stuff, then someone else can as well. So being a first mover, uh, is important especially if you want to secure um if you want to make what you're developing secure and not all first movers think like that imagine it anger depression emptiness anxiety jealousy every kind of unhappiness you can think of obsolete and to think rainer wanted nothing to do with this <laughs> It sounds like you actually want it because you want it for yourself. He thought it was a bad idea. Rainer is one of the ones who thinks negative emotions are important. Yeah? He told me he thinks pain should be regulated, not eliminated. Yeah. After all, I agree. why would anyone write a poem or make art if they only felt happiness? Yeah. He also said he was afraid of the way it would look in the media. A company as large as Skanda coming out with a product that changes the brain to make you happy. Yeah, it, it does seem, you know, dodgy. All the sorry excuses we have for public intellectuals today would throw a fit about how dystopian <laughs> it looked to them. But it does. It's better if a small startup takes the fall if public opinion turns against this technology. That's the kind of calculus he was doing. Mm. Those are the objections he claimed to have, at least. There's another one I suspect he had too, though. Yeah. If people are self-sufficient, they don't need an ongoing support oh. system. So you mean Skanda would become obsolete? A system provided by an all-knowing paternalistic presence like Skanda. Wait. You think Rainer wants people to stay miserable, so they stay dependent on mental health services from his company? That's pretty, you know, corporate. I don't know. I don't. I don't like Rainer, but I, I'm not sure, he's that evil in lack of a better word. Yes, yes, I do. It's quite the accusation, I know. Yeah. Not something I'd come out and say in public, not yet, anyway. You, but you plan to. But you see the people who come to Eliza regularly, it's part of their lives now. The more they integrate with Skanda's mental wellness tools, the more they'd be adrift without them. That's the real dystopia, don't you think? Rendered helpless without the guidance of computer algorithms. Total dependency on the system. Mm. Uh, excuse me for one second. Soren hurries out of the room for some reason, leaving me with questions echoing in my head. Would I want my suffering removed completely? Is it better to leave it alone? Erland. Hey. Do you think I could ask about Damien? Sure. Go ahead. I want to know about him. What do you want to know about him? What's up with Damien? Like, what kind of person was he? You're asking me to describe him? If you're okay with that. I don't want to make you if it's uncomfortable. 
but it would help me to know what he was like. He was a brilliant software architect and engineer. That's not what he was like. One of the most sincere people I ever met. He believed people were fundamentally good and wanted, them, wanted to help them. Our digital therapy project was no mandate from management. We started it ourselves. I see. Damien went through some difficult times himself. He wasn't able to get the care he needed. That's why he wanted to change things. I wish he'd gotten the chance. I see. Thank you. This is going to sound weird, but... Sometimes when I'm l working late and I doze in the, the office, I have dreams about him. I never met him in real life, but it's like I sense his presence there. Like he encoded himself into the system in some way. Haha, <laughs> I know it's just my mind playing tricks on me. I don't believe in ghosts. Uh, did he? Did he though? Maybe he did. Maybe he's in the system. Maybe he uploaded his brain or something. I mean, I'm just going through all the tropes. But I don't know. I feel like this is more than just a, a joke or a side note. Let's look around this apartment. Everyone is living so lavishly. But I don't like the concrete walls. Reminds me of the art in the counseling room. Knowing Soren, this is probably by some famous artist and it cost him a fortune. I could draw that. Seems restrained for him. Maybe he's cut back. Maybe he used to be an alcoholic. Soren likes his style of decor. I forgot what it was called. It's modern, from around the middle of the century. There's a term for it, for that, isn't there? Hmm. This is the time. It's really late. Soren comes back into the room and immediately pours himself another glass of whiskey. Maybe he's still an alcoholic. He doesn't seem to notice he's filled in almost, filled it almost all the way to the Evelyn, top. I really think you, of all people, might understand what I'm trying to do here. I get it, but you don't think it's dangerous. You're essentially making technology that changes what people think is real. Evelyn, you're much more concerned than you used to be about this kind of thing. I remember when you would dive headfirst into anything that held a promise, even a fleeting one, to help humanity. What changed your mind to make you so wary, so skeptical now? Can I ask you something, Soren? What did you tell Damien? Oh, this again. What? Don't tell me we had all of this wonderful conversation tonight, and now you're trying to blame me for Damien. Oh, did he commit suicide? Who put you up to this? Was, was it Nora? Rainer? I just want to know the truth, Soren. Nobody thought we could do it. You remember that. There was skepticism from day one. Do what? I had to defend us constantly from other project managers who didn't like that we existed, who wanted our budget and resources for themselves. Some of those were vicious, vicious fights. Amid all that, I had to be a leader, too. Part of that meant giving everyone on the team accurate information. So I was honest, honest in saying there were forces that sought to kill our project. Yeah. And I was honest when I said we'd never survive if we didn't have something to show for our work. So what? That was the reality. Without a product, we would be nothing. A guy like Rainer has access to anything he wants. If your pitch and demo isn't in the top 1% of what's out there, why would he be interested? That's what we were up against. So many mornings, I would get into work and see Damien there. At first, I thought he was getting up earlier than me, but then I noticed oh. he was still wearing the same shirt from the day he, before. He was crunching. Then, one morning, I got in and... Did he just... 
Did you just die from from overwork? Evelyn, please. Oh. I wanted everyone on the team to be healthy. I think that's so obvious it doesn't need to be said, but I'll say it now if you think I was deliberately trying to harm him. Did I instruct you to work until you injured yourselves? No, absolutely not. It was a tragedy, and I'm very sorry that it happened. I wish it hadn't. But I wasn't telling Damien to pull all-nighters. He was an adult. He made his own decisions about how he was going to work. And besides, what about your role in all this? If you noticed him not taking care of himself, you could have mentioned it. None of that behavior was unusual for Skanda anyway. It was part of our reputation, part of the culture. Mm. There isn't a single cause you can isolate in a case like this. Yeah, it's the culture we... It, it really needs to be changed because it's it's horrible that that people feel like they need to do this to themselves sitting in one place for too long chronic stress both of those are risk factors Evelyn I'm truly truly sorry about what happened to Damien he had a bright future and it was a shock to all of us so I guess he had a heart attack of some sort. But the answers here aren't simple ones. Dwelling on it isn't going to bring him back. Or maybe a blood clot. Nor is discussing the huge number of potential causes of pulmonary oh. embolism. Pulmonary embolism. I'm gonna look up what that is and write it. Or if it's, if, if it's, if it's got a more uh, common name, I'll, I'll write it. It happened. And now we have to move on. It felt like everything stopped. All of the work we were doing might as well have crumbled into dust. We were trying to build something to help the world and we got lost along the way. What was the point? There didn't seem to be a point any longer. I know that you cared about him. The process of grief can go on for some time, but you're taking the right steps. Mm. You're regaining your sense of purpose, aren't you? The experience of suffering is what makes us want to end suffering. It's late and I've, I've had quite a bit to drink, so I'll tell you a secret, Evelyn. I said I want to end human suffering, which makes me sound very altruistic. But I'm not doing it for humankind. Yeah. I'm doing it for myself. That's, that's what I thought. I have nothing. I've ruined every relationship yeah. I was ever in. I hardly ever see my kids, and, well, they hate me anyway. I would say I'm sorry for you, Soren, but I don't know. You, you have some responsibility in this yourself. I want to end my own suffering, but I can't bring myself to do it the traditional way. That's why I pursued this technology. That's why I want it to exist. The idea that everyone else could use it too, it's just a bonus. Yeah, uh, I don't like it. Yeah. Soren, are you okay? No, not at all. I'm aware of that. I'm not a good person, Evelyn. Neither is Rainer, of course, but at least I'm honest with myself about that. So, now that that's all out in the open, you probably want to head home before it gets too late. Don't let me keep you. Yes, I'll get going. I hope you can feel better. No, I'll be fine. Just please consider it, Evelyn. You and I are both more familiar with pain than we might wish to be. What if you could take that away? Each of us has a destiny to fulfill. I truly believe that. I'm sure yours will come into focus soon. Mm. Somehow, that conversation ended up being very draining. Is the promise of the new that new technology really all that keeps him going? 